Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to take a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 4 Leader Class Prime Universe Dreadwing. Let me know anything of this figure in the comment section down below. Is it a pickup or a pass? Now let's take a look at the figure's packaging. So here we have the packaging, starting at the very front we have Transformers on the side, we have the Legacy Evolution logo at the bottom of the box, so also a Prime Universe Dreadwing in white text with a white Decepticon symbol, we have a huge, really cool looking artwork shaft Dreadwing in both his robot and alt mode, if we do look at the top of the box, we have another Legacy Evolution logo and a QR code, if you do scan that, that'll show his stats, and if we do turn to the side of the box here, we have a really cool close-up of Dreadwing in his robot, of course, with his head and chest, and one more of a wide shot of him in his jet mode, looking really cool there, and if we do flip to the back of the box, the figure transforms in 29 Nine steps. There's a product shot of him and his robot, his alt mode, and showing off his Evo Fusion gimmick. And looking at the final side, we have half of the Legacy Evolution artwork. So you do can end the leader of this Legacy Evolution line and put both boxes together. You can complete the artwork. And that is pretty much it for the packaging. So let's now get into the review. Here we have Dreadwing in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very top with that head sculpt. We have some really nice gold for the face, some light piping red for the eyes, some blue for the main helmet section. I do like that really nice transparent red plastic for the entire chest with some silver, some gunmetal gray, and some really nice dark blue. I do like the silver and the really cool kind of thin spike pieces of the shoulders with the really big shoulder panels. And there's some nice gunmetal gray silver for the entire bicep, and there's some blue gold and a bit of silver for the entire form. I do like the very angular kind of spike design. There's some gray for the hands, and I really do like that kind of silver kind of layered effect at the chest with some more gunmetal gray at the crotch there with some more blue and gray at the top of the legs and the front of the legs there. I do like how big and bulky and beefy this guy is. He looks very strong, very intimidating. I think it looks super cool. I do love the gunmetal gray for the feet. And if we do flip to the back, overall not looking too bad. Uh, Kibble-wise, he does with this huge, you know, wing backpack here, but I really don't consider a backpack or kibble. I actually think it looks really cool. I do love these really cool intricate Decepticon uh, symbols. They're actually on the back of the wings here. They're also um, on the front of the chest, which looks super cool. And you might be wondering, does Dreadwinger actually have that same problem that Skyquick had where the entire uh, backpack section has a tendency to kind of lean or sag? Well, I'm actually happy to say, at least on my copy, that problem does not exist on this figure. There is actually two tabs, of course, on both sides where this wing section is and actually supposed to lock into place. Unfortunately, Skyquick had the problem where it really never really stayed. It typically actually kind of leaned back or kind of sagged back on the figure. It never looked really good. But on my copy of Dreadwing, it actually does stay, which I'm really happy with that. Unfortunately, it was substituted with another problem that I'll talk about in just a sec. But as far as the back of the arms and the legs are concerned, overall pretty well filled in. Unfortunately, I do have that same problem with uh, Skyquick with one of these little uh, uh, back panels on the ba uh, back panels on the back of the legs. Never really wants to stay in. It's this one. It typically kind of just flaps everywhere. This one actually does stay in. It's a bit weird how uh, both figures only have one that actually does tab in. But overall, detail-wise, I'm actually really impressed. So now for articulation, of course, the head can look up and down, look side to side. There's actually a slider joint the head so if you do want to have it sit further forward or further back really up to you um as for the shoulder panels, there's actually quite a bit of articulation. So there is a hinge up and down at the uh, actual, like, you know, uh, shoulder panel itself. There's also a rock uh, forward and back as well. There's also another hinge at the actual base of the thing that can also, of course, hinge forward and back and up and down as well. So there's quite a few hinges you can actually use, uh, which is really nice on uh, displaying the sphere with the weapons. Uh, of course, as for the entire shoulder and arm, unfortunately, it does not tab into place. That was one of my main complaints with Skyquick. I was expecting to have that same problem and complaint with this figure because of course that was really just how the figure was built it really wasn't like a qc or tonus from that's just how they designed the figure which i always found a bit odd because this is a leader class figure all they really needed to do was add just like a tab and slot and have the shoulder tab into place i do like the option of the butterfly joint of course how it can actually hinge forward and back because that actually does allow quite a bit of extra movement and actually really helps with some really cool poses with a huge weapon that'll show up in just a sec but there is a bicep rotation and of course the arms can move out and in with a really cool ratchet they can also hinge forward and back not a ratchet there's also a double jointed elbow and a really tight hinge and there is a wrist rotation and if we do move all this kind of out of the way there is a full functioning waist rotation all the way around which is really cool to see there is ratcheting forward and back not out to the side and of course, there is rotation at the top of the leg. There is a knee bend on two hinges to a really, really good degree. And he also does have an ankle pivot, which probably could be a bit better. That's not the greatest movement. But let me just quickly straighten him up. And I'll actually mention the other problem that unfortunately was not present on Skyquake, but actually is present on this figure. Um, and it's not the biggest problem. It's not like a deal breaker. I would still highly recommend to get this figure, but I do want to mention it. So uh, pretty much this entire crotch piece here is actually comprised 
of two ways how it actually taps to the chest. There's actually a slider joint that mostly comes into play for transformation. Of course, you'll see later when I actually transform the figure. There's also an entire tab section that actually taps into pretty much the nose cone of the jet. And as you can see here, there's a bit of a gap. So I actually have to sometimes somewhat compress the figure as you just saw. So again, not the biggest deal, but sometimes it is a bit floppy in this area, which never really was the case with Skyquick. So that's a bit unfortunate. Again, not as a big of a problem as the backpack, because you could actually obviously tell with Skyquick, the backpack was pretty much leaning and kind of falling off the back of the figure. This is not nearly as noticeable. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. So you actually look out for it if you get this figure, but uh, maybe there's a fix for it. Maybe I could actually add like some floor polish or something to actually tighten those connections. But again, I'm actually really glad to say that that backpack problem was fixed. But let me just quickly straighten it up and then we can actually cover the accessories. He is a bit hard to pose at times because his feet are quite small. And also again, the ankle pivot is not the greatest. I definitely think that could be improved. And he's a tad bit back heavy with those huge wings. So as for accessories, he does come with the same ones that came with Skyquick, just slightly different. So of course the sword mold wise is the same, just, just this time kind of done in a really nice evil transparent red, which is super cool. I think it would have made sense if this was actually silver because they are being accurate with his actual blaster. So I think it would have made sense if they were going to be accurate, you know, with the sword as well, not just do a, a random, you know, red sword. And the show is actually silver. Again, not really complaint, more of a want. It's just if they're going to be accurate with the weapon, of course, the blaster, then might as well be also accurate with the sword, which can be put, um, in either hand, but do keep aware it's actually sort of designed or actually used kind of like the Jutsu Laser Optimus Prime Sword, where there's a small little tab, so it actually does go in a certain way. There's a little gap in the hand, and of course, there's a tab there, so that actually stores in a specific way. I actually typically don't use the sword. I actually typically uh, use this as the Evo Fusion gimmick, which you actually do fold up for the Evo Fusion gimmick. As for his second weapon, the final weapon, the huge uh, giant cannon. So this is overall pretty much the same weapon that came with Skyquick, of course. His was more of a kind of Gatling gun type weapon. There was a ton of barrels. They actually really just changed the tip. This main uh, front section here where the handles are, all of that is the same. Really just the tip here. And Dreadwing here was more of kind of a single barreled uh, weapon, which I always thought was really cool how he's pretty much essentially just holding a huge cannon, which I thought was awesome. And it is blast but piece compatible. Also, of course, um, for holding this, there's actually a secondary handle here. And there's so many different ways you can actually have the figure hold this weapon. I actually typically do it in a certain way that I'll try and show off in just a sec. It's a bit hard to do any crazy pose of the figure, of course, when you're actually recording off cam, it's a lot easier to actually prepare for it. But how the Evo Fusion gimmick works is you actually do store the sword on the underside here and somewhat act as like ammo or like storage, which I actually thought was pretty cool. I do like the sword again. It probably would have been better if it was silver. I think that would have just made more sense. But typically how I store it is, I actually do use this back post and store this in the back of the hand here. And this is definitely where the uh, a butterfly joint really does come in handy because you can actually pull off some really crazy dynamic poses. Please do not skip the intro. I actually took some really cool uh, photos and pictures of this guy, but you can pull off some pretty crazy poses. Again, since I'm doing this, you know, while recording, uh, I am not going to do, you know, the most crazy dynamic pose right now. Um, off cam, you know, when I'm preparing, I can do some pretty cool poses. But um, for the time being, I don't think that looks that bad. You know, you can get bad that you can actually pull off some pretty cool, you know, generic poses like this, where he's just like, you know, walking with it or kind of uh, holding it like that, or you can pull off some really cool kind of flying, you know, running poses, but overall really good accessories. I just kind of wish maybe the sword would have been silver. Also, this is more of a want. Maybe they could have actually thrown in a few of his bombs because if you'd never watched the Transformers Prime series, Dreadwing actually did have these really cool kind of throwable bombs. He actually attached, I think one to bulkhead and he actually threw some of the Autobots one time. That would have been a pretty cool inclusion. I know they're trying to be cheap because this is just a repaint, slight retool of Skyquick. So I was really never Never expecting any accessories, but maybe if anyone was to make like a upgrade kit, you know, or like three print something, they could make some of those little weapons or those little bombs. And I think that would be a really cool inclusion with this figure. Um, but now for some comparisons, here is with another uh, modern day Prime Universe figure, that being RC, which, you know, uh, some can consider probably the worst of the Prime Universe figures. I probably do agree with that statement, but it's definitely not a bad figure in my opinion. But they do look pretty cool side by side. You can definitely tell he is a very big figure. I do know leaders have shrunk over the years, but he's actually a pretty decently sized leader. He's pretty big. And now for a mold comparison, I'm actually going to have to have quite a bit of space for this because they're both pretty big figures. But here he is with his mold mate and his brother, that being 
Skyquake, and I do have them in a pretty cool running pose. Again, off camera, I was actually able to prepare this, but you know, when I'm recording, probably not as good, but they do look really cool side by side. Please do let me know in the comments of the two versions of this mold, or the two brothers, which one do you like more, Skyquake or Dreadwing? I've always really liked Dreadwing, I just love his deco with the gold and the blue. Blue is my favorite color, so that probably does add to the reason why I like it more. I've always just really liked his story, you know, spoiler alert, you know, Skyquake did die in the very first episode he was introduced, Dreadwing did last quite a bit longer, so I think they were able to develop his character a lot more, but they do look really cool side by side, and again, the only change on the figure, you know, just a deco, but the actual weapon, as you can see, the tip is different, and the sword is the same mold, just a different color. But they do look really cool side by side, and for one final Prime Universe comparison, here he is with Bulkhead. And I think they look super cool side by side. And that is pretty much it for comparisons and this robot mode. Let's now get down to transformation. So now for transformation into the jet mode, what you want to do is collapse the feet against the thruster at the bottom of the foot. Then you're going to move the shoulder panels up and out of the way to allow enough clearance to actually mess with and transform the arms. You're going to move the arms all the way out again just to add enough space so you can actually transform them and mess with them. Then you're actually going to get the head. It's on a slider. You're just going to push this back all the way like that. Then what you can do is open up this little flapper kind of panel on the uh, inside of the form. You're just going to fold that back to actually collapse and kind of touch the bicep. Then you're going to fold in the hand to all the exact same steps on the other side. So just bring out this panel. This is just going to collapse against the bicep. Then you're going to fold in the hand and both arms actually have double jointed elbows. So you're actually going to use that double hinge and just hinge up the entire form. So it actually kind of touches and connects with the shoulder. Do the exact same thing on their side, just fold it up like that. And then what you can do is actually rotate the waist. It really doesn't matter either way. You're just going to have the legs, of course, both facing one side like that. And then what you can do is actually go to the back of the figure. You're going to split this entire kind of wing section back here. It can be a bit tricky at times, so just split that like that. As you can see, there are several posts on one side and, of course, several slots corresponding to those posts on the other. Then you're going to get the entire wing section, pretty much use this hinge and rotate it all the way forward like that. So rotate Rotate this all the way forward, rotate this all the way forward like that. And things can be pretty messy at times, as you can see. But then uh, once you've actually moved the wings, you can actually rotate the waist back to how it originally was. So make sure the typical front of the crotch is actually facing the front because you do not want the legs facing the wrong way because you actually have to transform a certain way for the jet mode. So make sure you don't make that uh, mistake. Then what you're going to do is actually get these little wings, untap them from the back of the legs. As you can see, there's a small little tab there and a slot right there that's just going to fold around and tab into the inside of the leg. There's a slot there and there's is a tab right there that's just going to tab into place. Do the exact same thing on their side. Just tab that in. Then what you want to do is actually get this entire sort of cockpit region, nose cone region, and just hinge this up. You're actually going to have to separate the waist and crotch from the top portion of the figure. So this is just going to separate. It's on another slider. It can be a bit hard to do, so just slide that out and untab it. And how uh, this was tabbed in a place, as you can see, there's this entire slot section right there, and there is two tabs, this little clip section right there. So you're just going to fold this entire section, and it's just going to collapse over the head. You will have to kind of keep moving these shoulder panels out of the way just to get to an, uh, enough space. And while you're doing that, make sure you push the arms back just to get enough space as well. Then you can slowly feed the head into that little cavity right there. So just make sure that covers over the head like that. Sometimes it is actually a bit easy to sometimes hinge the head back, then of course cover that over the top like that. And then that will just tab into place like that. Then what you can do is uh, extend the nose cone kind of bring this piece up and sometimes occasionally it'll actually bring out the landing gear so just kind of flip that back in then you can actually go to these little wing pieces right here rotate these around like that rotate these around like that and then what you can do is actually tab these back together just using those same connections as before, just those posts and ports, just tab those together like that. Then you can actually get these shoulder panels These are just going to rotate around like that and they'll actually kind of form these sides of the jets so just fold those in and those will just slide into place like that. So then we can actually flip to the underside. You're going to tab both the arms together and these will just hinge down and into place like that. And just make sure those are nice 
and compact and compressed against it. So now this part can be a, a tad bit tricky. You're actually going to move this entire little sort of thigh section or top of the leg section all the way around so you can actually fold the leg in. So it's a bit tricky. You have to get this open space right here pretty much at the top, not at the bottom. So you have to rotate this entire little gray piece all the way around. It sometimes can be a bit tricky. You sometimes have to move the leg with it as well. And of course, once you do that, you can actually fold up the leg because there's this huge open space in the uh, back of the leg there. And of course, there's the top of the leg that will just fold up like that. And there is, as you can see, a tab on the uh, bottom side of the wing. And there is a slot on the, of course, top side of the leg. And you're going to do the exact same step on this side as well. So just rotate this little gray piece all the way up like that. So just make sure you keep moving it. Sometimes, again, can be a bit tricky. Just rotate that up. And then you can fold in the leg. And then you're going to tab the wing into the leg like that. And then make sure this entire section here is compressed as well. And just making sure everything is nice and compact. You can actually hinge up the little wings right here. And there we have Dreadwing in his jet mode. Let's take a look at the details. Here we have Dreadwing in his jet mode. Let's take a look at the details. Starting at the very front, we have some really nice dark transparent red for this entire cockpit region with some really nice dark blue and gold for the entire nose cone. I do like these really cool kind of spike wing pieces done in blackish purple with some really nice dark blue and gunmetal gray silver. There's some more of that transparent red for this entire back section. I do love this huge booster done in silver. We'll actually take a look at greater detail on that in just a sec. I do like these really cool kind of stylized Decepticon symbols with a really cool gold and little added details and kind of almost kind of wing crown pieces. It's pretty interesting. I I do like all the little extra wings and tips and spikes there. I do love all the silver and the blue. And of course, speaking as before, that huge giant engine section there looking really cool. This one isn't actually blaster piece compatible. That one's kind of made actually from this other wing piece from the rope mode. But these two actually uh, are actually in the area of the feet from the rope mode. These are blaster piece compatible. This one isn't. But I do love the really cool kind of inner red detailing there looking like it's about to, you know, burst off with flames, which is really cool. And I think overall, it's a really cool, very beefy and bulky jet mode and if we do flip to the other side this actually does have landing gear they're not actual rolling wheels they're just kind of sculpted in wheels but still a nice option that they didn't have to do uh, and of course overall pretty well compact we do have the legs there but they're actually folded up so you really can't see much robot mode kibble i think probably my only complaint is the feet that's really the only obvious giveaway that this can transform and there's of course the feet or the legs at the back but everything else like the arms you know the head is overall really well tucked away and compact this figure does have accessory storage i typically don't use it because it actually doesn't really work you can't actually store the entire sort of gatling gun or cannon underneath using that uh, post or uh, that port at the back and of course there's the post on the actual accessory it can work there but actually does make the jet unlevel it can actually sit with the weapon it actually kind of wobbles on a surface so i typically do leave it off to the side and even though it sometimes doesn't wobble uh you really can't see it that much like when you actually um, put the jet you know on a table or on a surface with that cannon you can barely even see it there so again i typically leave it off to the side because it's barely even noticeable. Um, I suppose, of course, there is some mech tech ports uh, on these wing areas here, so you could store on the top. Doesn't look that great in my opinion, but there is some options in case you're wondering. And as for some comparisons, here he is with Skyquake, his mold mate and his brother, and I think they look pretty cool side by side. And again, let me know in the comments of the two, which one you prefer. You might be kind of mixed, like you might, you know, maybe like Skyquake's jet mode, but you like might like Dreadwing's robot mode. I'm actually kind of all Dreadwing. I don't know. I just really love his character. Love the blue and the gold just really works for me. Nothing against Skyquake. I was just always really like this character. And I think they look really cool side by side. Two really big, massive jets, but look super cool side by side. And for actually another green figure comparison, here he is with Bulkhead. And they were actually kind of arch rivals or kind of nemesis in the show, but they look pretty cool side by side. And that is pretty much it for comparisons and this alt mode. Let's now get down to reverse transformation. So now for reverse transformation, what you want to do is go to the top. You're going to collapse these little wings against these back wings like that. Then you can actually flip to the underside of the jet. You're just going to collapse these little landing gear like that then you can actually flip back to the uh, top side of the jet you're going to hinge out these little shoulder panels or of course these little side wing pieces out like that then you can get the tip of the nose cone hinge this down and out like that then we can actually flip to the back and the underside of the jet we're going to untap the entire booster section or leg section from the main wing do the exact same thing on their side just untap that back section there then you can actually fully extend the leg out like that so this part can be a tad bit tricky even both ways transferring it from the road 
short to the jet and the jet to the robot. So I'm going to try and go slow and show it as best I can. So you're actually going to rotate this top little gray piece right here, pretty much the thigh or the top of the leg. You're going to rotate this all the way around and it down. You're going to want to make sure this little open cavity piece right here or this gray piece right here is actually facing down for the robot, but of course up for the jet. So you can actually fold up the leg. So just rotate that down. Then of course you can hinge the leg down, do the exact same process on their side. So just rotate this top little gray piece all the way around and down. And then of course you can actually have the legs facing however you wish. Then you can actually fold out the feet fold out the feet, get, get these little fin pieces. There is a tab right there and a slot right there that's just going to tab into place like that. Same thing on their side, just tab that in. Now we're actually going to go to this midsection right here. You can actually hinge the arms up, then you can actually split them in half and hinge these out of the way like that. And you can kind of move the little shoulder panels, however you wish, of course, just to get them out of the way like that. And then what you can do is actually get the entire waist section here. You can rotate the legs like that. Uh, it really doesn't matter, you know, which way. Just make sure both legs are facing one direction. Then you're actually going to go to this section right here. You're actually going to split the wings like that. Just split them in half. It can be a bit tricky to do. Just kind of loosen these all like that. Just split this entire section like that down the middle. Then you can get the wing, just hinge this entire section to the back of the figure like that. Just rotate this all the way back like that. Then you can get the entire waist. Make sure the front of the crotch is actually facing towards you or the front of the figure. Then we're going to go to the back here. You can get these little wing sections here, rotate these around like that, rotate them around. Then what you can do is get this entire top section here. It can be a bit tricky at times. Sometimes you can move, you know, the arms out of the way, really however you want, just to get some extra space. You can hinge this entire nose cone section back. It's going to fit into this entire open cavity. And you can rotate these shoulder panels around to get some extra space. And this entire section will fold back and actually will reveal the robot mode head in the process. So just fold this entire section back and where the head was actually stored was inside this entire little cavity right here. So hinge this back and you're going to want to make sure this nose cone here is pretty much flush with this little clip section right there. So just fold this all the way up and in like that. So there's this entire clip section right here and there's these slots right there and that's just going to tap into place. So there's also this slider right here that's just going to slide up. So just align all of that up and it's place like that it can be a bit tricky to align just tab all that in like that just make sure all that is secure and tabbed into place like that there we go and yes it's pretty messy right now we just need to strain up a few things you can actually hinge the arms down get these shoulder panels just hinge those over hinge the arms down and then get these shoulder panels, just hinge those over the figure like that. And just bring this back, collapse that over there like that. Then we can actually go to the back of the figure. We're just going to straighten this up a tad bit. So there is actually tabs on these sections right here and slots pretty much on the inside of this hinge that's just going to tab into place. And you might be wondering, will it actually stay? Because unfortunately, that was one of the main problems with Skyquake, the uh, other previous use of this mold. They never really wanted to stay, but I'm actually happy to say on at least my copy of Droidwing, they actually do stay tab into place, which is really good. Also, do make sure sometimes this can happen. Make sure this entire little uh, cockpit region is folded underneath these wings. So just make sure both those sides do tab into that section there like that. And then of course you can tab both of these halves here like that together. Just to make sure all that's nice and aligned. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky, just to make sure that it's nice and squeezed together like that. And then what you can do is actually fully extend and kind of bring out the uh, arm there, fold out the hands and bring this little panel out. There is a slot right there and a tab on the panel and that should just tab into place like that. Do the exact same thing. For the other arm, just fold up the hands, fold out this panel, that'll just tab into place, and then fully extend the arm. And then let me just quickly straighten him up. And that is pretty much it for reverse transmission. Let's now get down to the final thoughts. 
So now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 4 Leader Class Prime Universe Dreadwing. So if you do have the original use of this mold, that being the Leader Class Skyquake, you know exactly what to expect with this figure. Of course, overall, the figure itself is just a direct repaint. It's really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer. As of the Transformers Prime TV series, I always actually prefer Dreadwing over Skyquake because he actually lasted a lot longer. Spoiler alert, Skyquake actually dies in the episode he is introduced in the show, which was a bit disappointing. Also, blue is my favorite color, so that might be probably one of the main reasons why I liked Dreadwing. I've always just really liked his deco, and I actually really liked his character in the Transformers Prime TV series. I'm really glad they actually made this figure. Always been my favorite, too. Of course, please do let me know in the comment section below of the two, Skyquake or Dreadwing, which one do you prefer? So the figure overall, all the things you liked about Skyquake, of course, are going to be on Dreadwing. All the things you didn't like on Skyquake are also going to be on Dreadwing. They actually did fix one major problem, though, which I'm really happy to say. Of course, I do have to say, this could just be my copy. Maybe if you do get Dreadwing, you could have that same problem. I'm about to mention. I don't want to, of course, get people's hopes up like all the problems are fixed. There are still some problems on this figure, but one of the major ones that I had with Skyquick actually was fixed with this one. Again, could just be my copy. Maybe they actually fixed on every single other copy. I really do not know. But the main problem I had with Skyquick was the backpack. A lot of people have this problem too, where the wings are actually supposed to kind of lock and tab into place, but every time you'd use those set tabs and slots they actually made for the figure, it would always untap and the entire wing backpack would pretty much sag and sort of lean to the back and it would be very very hard to pose and actually be sometimes back heavy at times and it would look a bit on poses where the entire wings are kind of falling down the back of the figure so that it did not look good. They actually fixed it, at least on my copy. Droidwing, his wings actually do stay tabbed in place. I actually tabbed them in and they have not come untabbed once since. I've transformed this figure multiple times and every time I've actually transformed it back into the robot and moved the wings into the correct orientation and position, they actually do stay, which is so, I'm just so glad to say that. Unfortunately, since that problem was fixed, it was actually substituted with another problem, which is very disappointing supporting. It's not as big of a problem, but I do have to mention, I probably will mention some other problems, uh, of course, earlier in this video, because it's a bit easier to show those problems in hand, of course, where the figure's actually in that set mode, rather than describing them, but one of the other problems they actually added to this figure that Skyquick never did have, again, could just be my copy, I really do not know, is the crotch. So the crotch is actually kind of made up of two different ways how it tabs to, to, to the torso and the top uh, half of the figure. There's a slider joint, and there's also a tab and sort of slot system, sort of a clip system and unfortunately those do work they're still on the figure of course same molding and everything but for some reason i think they're just a tad bit looser because the slider joint actually has a tendency to somewhat slide down so there's a typically a bit of a little crease or crevice where the crotch and the top of the chest is uh you know of course from the bottom half and the top half so there's sometimes a little bit of a gap there never really happened with skyquick it's not the biggest deal typically i just have to kind of push the crotch you know and the chest together and it'll close that gap so it would have been nice if that was a bit more secure, kind of like Skyquake, because I never had that problem, but all the other problems that I had with Skyquake, of course, are still present on this figure, minus the backpack situation, which is probably, truth be told, one of my biggest complaints with Skyquake, which is, I'm really glad to say, was fixed on this figure. Um... One of, my one of my problems that I never, um, that I knew was never going to change with Dreadwing, because of course it was really just how the figure was built, is the elbows and kind of the arms. They never really tab into place. The entire shoulder region, they kind of just expect you to put the shoulder pad over the actual shoulder and it's just supposed to keep it in place. I do like the butterfly joint. That actually helps so much with poses. I'm really glad that's a part of this figure. It's very useful and it's also part of transformation. So I do understand why there's a butterfly joint forward and back, but they don't actually lock the arms into place, which I always thought was a bit odd kind of cheap considering this is a leader you do have to keep in mind this is a $55 figure kind of depending where you buy it typically 55 to 60 again where you're buying it um, but still for a leader class figure that really shouldn't be the case it might bother me more than others but typically when I'm posing with a figure it can be a bit irritating where the arms kind of just flop everywhere fortunately enough I'm pretty sure the hinge or the joint the actual shoulder is on is a pin joint so the joint itself isn't that loose but I always get surprised how the arms are not tabbed into place because really it should be kind of a given common thing that the arms or the shoulders are tapped into place. So I never really understood that. As far as the other problems, um, uh, some other really minor ones, like the little back kind of fin piece on the back of the legs, one of them doesn't tap into place, which I always found a bit odd because Skyquick had that same thing too. There's two little fins on the back of the legs, of course, one on each side, one of them would tap into place and one of them went. Same case for Skyquick and Dreadwing. I really don't know why that is. It could just be a coincidence. But as far as accessories go, he, he does come with that same sort of Gatling gun, sort of like 
like big uh, barrel cannon, which is super cool. It's the same overall mold as Skyquick's. It's just the barrel. So uh, Skyquick was more of a Gatling gun, of course, as in multiple barrels, but Dreadwing was as more of a singular barrel. It's kind of just a huge cannon. I really do love the gunmetal gray and the silver on there. I think that looks really cool. But as for the entire sword handle section, that's all the same. Really just the tip is the only difference. As for the sword, again, the same, but this time I'm pretty sure uh, Skyquick was a yellow sword, but now they actually for Dreadwing, it's more of a kind of transparent see-through red sword, which I do have to say, I do like the red. It looks very menacing and evil. It actually kind of matches his red light piping in his eyes, which is a really nice touch. But I think if they were going to be accurate with the weapon, they probably should have also been accurate with the sword because, of course, the uh, whole Gatling gun and, of course, the cannon for Skyquick and Dreadwing was accurate. But I'm, I'm, I'm technically, Skyquick never really came with the sword. He never actually used a sword in the show. And also for Dreadwing, if you're going to try and be 100% accurate, technically in Transformers, Prime, his sword was silver, not red. So I think if they were going to try and be accurate with the weapons, they probably should have done both. Not just one, a very modern complaint. As for the figure itself, of course, all the articulation is really good. Definitely leader class worthy of that title. Really good articulation, really nice, uh, good joints. There's actually some ratchets in some areas, which is really nice to see. There's actually double jointed elbows. Transformation is actually very complex. I really do hope you were um, able to see all the steps and all the uh, movements and transformations really uh, thoroughly and good. I actually tried to go a bit slower with the transformation for both uh, back and forth, you know, reverse transformation, normal transformation, because it's actually pretty complex. It's not hard. There's just a lot of steps and a lot of stuff to do all at once. So hopefully it wasn't too messy. I really tried to slow down with that. As for the jet mode, I've always really loved this jet mode, Skyquick and Dreadwing. Again, I just love Dreadwing Stecko, love the dark blue, the silver, the gold, just a huge, big, beefy jet. I think it looks super cool. I love all the little mini wings in the back, and there's some really cool ports for some blaster pieces. I do like that. Um, um, I'd say one last thing, more of a, I would say a once and then a complaint. It would have been nice maybe if they throw, uh, threw in maybe some detonators or some, uh, bombs for this figure because, uh, Dreadwing actually in the show occasionally would use these really cool kind of throwable bombs. I'm pretty sure he attached one to Bulkhead one time. He would throw them at the Autobots. And I think that would be a really nice inclusion. I'm pretty sure, you know, of course, as we all would expect, they're going to include at whatever came with Dreadwing is going to come with Skyquick and vice versa. So if they did include this weapon with Dreadwing, of course, Skyquick never really had those weapons so he would come with less accessories so i'm pretty sure they were trying to save money they just wanted to repaint uh, do a repaint slight retold that's understandable but if they wanted to go the extra mile maybe a few small detonators or maybe just one detonator or bomb would have been a really nice inclusion i really do hope you enjoyed this review please don't let me know anything of this figure in the comment section down below and i'll see you next time